Well, as the title says, no clickbait here. <laughs> this is real. Uh, well, watch to the end of the video. You'll see exactly what's happening here. It's not good. It's not good. Do I send this engine in for a full rebuild, or do I keep tinkering? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to the hangar. Um, hope you liked the part two of that cliffhanger. What went wrong with the wig bag? I have the controller removed. It's at home. I haven't put the new circuit board in yet. This is the next weekend, uh, the weekend after New Year's Eve uh, weekend. And um, I'm going to discuss for a minute here the engine fogging. Now, when I fog the engine, uh, at, at the end of that, I, and I shut the engine off, I made a comment. Uh, I'll, I'll cut it in right here, what the comment that I made. I was expecting more smoke. I thought it'd be like fogging for mosquitoes or something. So, yeah, it, it didn't make as much smoke as I thought. So, uh, and it didn't draw a whole heck of a lot of oil. I spoke to John over at Rotac um, uh, Service, the guy who actually makes these uh, engine fogging um, uh, kits, um, and um, um, he's an excellent kind of talk to. He's uh, uh, very, very helpful, and uh, and he said, "No, it's not going to make a lot of smoke. He says, but you're, it's going to draw oil." Well. One of the things I noticed when I turned the oil valve on, that it started drawing oil up the tube and then kind of stopped and took, you know, forever, literally 10 minutes to get to the point where it was starting to look like it was getting into the carburetors. And that didn't seem right. So, um, he said, no, that's not quite right either. So I said, is it the oil that I'm using? He said, no, no, that oil is fine. He says, it should draw. You should, after two minutes or so, it, it should, you should see a noticeable drawdown. There. there should be a noticeable change in the smoke output, that kind of stuff. And I uh, said, so well, I didn't see any of that. So his suggestion was that maybe the, the primer ports that are on the carburetors, where I've got the oil injection plugged into, they could be plugged. And you know what? When I cleaned those carburetors, one of the things I did not do was I did not clean those ports. Don't know why, I just, well, they're primer ports. Well, I'm not using a primer, so, yeah, it was soaking in the carb cleaning solution, but I never blasted them out with air, so there could be some debris blocking the little tiny hole in there. His suggestion, remove the carburetors um, and uh, clean those ports. First, check to see if they're plugged or not, clean those ports and then reconnect everything and try it again. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to remove these carburetors and I'm going to clean those primer ports and then I'm going to put it back together again. Um, and then um, it's not that bad temperature wise outside so I'm going to flip this airplane around, open up those doors, back it out and do the engine start up again. Uh, also one of the things, I, I, I bought a um, spark plug cleaner, pneumatic air powered spark plug cleaner because the plugs are fouled on this thing and uh, I have new plugs but I'm going to try the spark plug cleaner and see if that works because they're all carboned up pretty badly and carbon is a, a pretty decent conductor of electricity and if the insulator on spark plugs, uh, you know, where you've got your center pin and then of course your, your other part and there's spark between, but if the insulator is coated in carbon, it's possible that the spark doesn't go across a gap, the spark will simply go down onto the insulator and travel around and it might ignite your air fuel mixture um, or it might not, so foul plugs, bad. So I'm going to clean these plugs and um, and then I'm going to try doing an engine fogging again. So I figure this is going to take at least an hour to do uh, with the carburetors and cleaning the plugs then putting it back together again. There's still some fuel left in the fuel tank. Um, I think it should be enough for me to start it up and warm up the engine and turn on the engine fogging. If not, I got a little more gas. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today. 
Again, thank you everybody who's uh, following along and making those suggestions, that kind of stuff. Oh, and uh, remember, down at the bottom there, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, and um, leave a comment. Commenting is actually good because it, uh, it means that people are engaged and uh, somehow YouTube then s puts it on suggested lists, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm finding out these things. Uh, YouTube and all the other platforms that I might be uploading this to as well. So, um, again, thanks a lot for watching and following along with my uh, craziness. And uh, so, first thing, going to pull these things off, going to start cutting the safety wire and that kind of stuff. Pull it all apart, clean it up, and uh, that's it. So, follow along and pitter patter. Let's get at her. Well, we get into warp speed again. Haven't done this for a while. I was trying to figure out how to edit this together. Do I do, like, quick shots and what have you? But no, you know what? I'm just going to go with the um, uh, extreme fast speed and uh, do a narration over this. This is going to be a single take narration, so if I mess up in, <laughs> in some way, well, sucks to be me. Anyways, I'm pulling the carburetors off, and I'm going to be cleaning out the... Uh, uh, the ports and over there you see I'm, I'm draining some of that excess fuel into a jerry can that's still inside the fuel line I just didn't want to spill it all over the uh, the floor um, somebody comes into the hangar actually a bunch of guys come into the hangar and you might see me yakking and talking every once in a while well, I'm, I'm talking to these guys so anyways yeah I cut the um, cut the safety wires I uh, removed the air cleaner pulled off the fuel lines now I'm disassembling the uh, the uh, parts on the carburetor. I'm not taking it completely apart. Well, I am. I'm I'm taking the carbs off, but I'm just taking the sliders out and I'm letting them hang by the cable. And um, there we go. There's the first one is off, and I'm going to be taking the second one off. And uh, oh, there, see, I'm talking to somebody inside the hangar. And um, there we go. The second one is coming off, and I'm going to be taking it over to the bench and cleaning and cleaning out the primer ports with carb cleaner. And right about here, you see me spraying the carb cleaner right into the primer port. And what happens is um, it, it blasts it out. It was plugged. They were definitely plugged. And here I'm showing the squirt some in there. Oh, you can see it coming out nice you know it's coming out the where it should be and thumbs up yay they're clean now for the second part the reassembling I'm putting the carburetors back on kind of reverse order uh, making sure everything is on good and tight uh, everything is, is fastened properly and and um, uh, doing a, a thorough job as as uh, much as possible I want this thing to work uh, I really, really want this thing to work this time. I want the engine fogging to work. I want to see mosquitoes dying. Well, there's no mosquitoes because it's winter. <laughs> but, yeah, I think you get the picture. So, yeah, here I am uh, just putting everything back together. There we go. Next carburetor goes on. And uh, all the hoses back in there, all the uh, little parts and whatnot and here I'm talking to somebody again and uh, boy I'm wondering if you're even listening to what I'm saying here guys uh, let me know in the comments if you're actually um, uh, putting up with my narration as I'm doing all of this or if I should put music should I put music on here like elevator music or something or or, or I don't know uh, classical music oh okay, yeah now comes the air cleaner and boy you know these things are tough to put on those of you who have these Rotax engines know exactly what I'm saying. Like these things, yeah, those little ridges they put in there so they don't fall off. Well, it also makes it hard to put on. Okay, I slowed the video down to show you that I'm putting in brand new spark plugs. I have a spark plug cleaner that I purchased that sprays this abrasive of all of the spark plugs, and it worked beautifully. But what happened was in the tiny nooks at the very back end of the spark plug I noticed that some of the grit was was stuck in there and I'd need a needle to get in there and poke them out so I did not want to reinstall those into the engine because I didn't want that abrasive grit getting inside the engine so I elected just to put brand new set of spark plugs in and um, yeah it uh, you'll see the results of that and oh there we go 
the doors are now opening and then I'm going to be pushing the airplane out and uh, we're getting ready for the uh, the engine startup and um, this is the the end of the narration portion boy it's a long narration uh, again if you've uh, sat through all of it um, you're a trooper <laughs> thank you very much and this is the end of the narration let's go to real time Mags on, chokes on full, a little bit of throttle. All right, clear prop. Okay, I'm back with narration. Just quickly here, I'm noticing something is wrong. Uh, notice my hand, I'm turning the charge circuit on and off, and I'm looking for a change in the voltage, and I don't see any. Uh-oh. Well, the first sign of doom. Well, boys and girls. Um, I got a problem. I cleared out the um, the ports and it's still not drawing f uh, fuel even at the lower RPM or not fuel um, fogging oil at the lower RPM. So, um, but there's another problem. Actually, two. Uh, no charging current. Um, one of the uh, one of the uh, one of our friends uh, one of my friends. And he goes under the uh, title of the Cotton Patch. He mentioned that, yeah, your voltage was low. And I thought, yeah, it's low because I, I, I have a low charge battery. And it was drawing it down. No, no. Um, <laughs> I'm not producing any voltage out of that charging circuit on that engine. Okay, that's bad. Uh, it's not, there's no AC coming out of it at all. Dead. Totally dead. Okay, so, fair enough, that needs to be repaired. But it also doesn't want to idle after warming up. It doesn't want to idle um, when the uh, choke is dropped. Strange. So um, I've got a couple of options over here. I'm 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 thinking I've got to pull the engine off of this thing. I got to pull it off anyways to fix the charging circuit. But I'm gonna talk to some people and find out what's it going to cost. Maybe, maybe, because it is at 140 hours. It's only halfway to a rebuild. Um, maybe I should send it to an expert and get them to rebuild it and make it good. I don't know. Leave a comment below. Hopefully this is a short enough video. Uh, a little update sort of thing. Uh, it, it's running, but it's not running right. I would never fly with it. So, so there it is. Um, <laughs> the engine isn't right. Something just not right with it. Again, not charging and um, not idling. And the carbs have been set up, and I've, I've, I've done engines my entire life. Um, I do know that there's a problem somewhere here, and I'm pretty sure I can diagnose it. But I'm going to make some phone calls and find out what it would take to zero time this engine and get them to go over it and then uh, and then I know that it's it's fully serviced from you know anyways that's it for today uh, I'm going to pull this airplane back into the hangar close the hangar doors it's actually a very nice day today it's uh, it's cold out as you can see oh, you can see my breath uh, it's cold out but the sun's warm and, um, and it's uh, not very windy it's actually a nice day to do this. So, yeah, um, failure. Definitely a failure. <laughs> it sure started quick, though. I mean, it started right away. As soon as I put the new plugs inside there, 
it, it, as you saw, it's like boom, started instantly. So that's good. It just doesn't want to run without the choke on. And um, fuel pressures are good with the electric fuel pump on or off. Fuel pressures are good, so the both pumps are working. <coughs> It's just an idling issue, which I'm pretty sure is just an adjustment. But the electrical not working as well. I, I'll, I'll talk to the uh, the experts and see what they say, and uh, and then debate. Do I just want to send it back to them and say, hey, can you like zero time it or not? So we'll see. You will find out what I do with it. Thanks a lot for following along. Appreciate it. And um, so um, that's the uh, that's the. Uh, uh, into that for right now. Uh, there's other things I'm, I'm contemplating, and uh, more work to be done. We've got to put the doors on, got to put the windshield on, and the third door on the windshield. Like, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done with this thing. So, but with that engine, we'll debate it. See what it, see what happens. So, again, thanks for following along. Uh, me here in the hangar, and uh, well, can't talk straight. <laughs> My lips, I'm, I am getting a little cold. Keep your stick on the ice. We'll see you again. Bye-bye for now. Yeah, now begs the question. Do I send it in for a complete rebuild, or do I continue tinkering with it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. We'll see you again on the hangar. Bye-bye.